We want to welcome everyone to the Vision Podcast right now, episode four. Uh, we got some pretty good topics to touch on for everyone, and we do have a guest. Uh, we do have a guest speaker today, uh, DJ Banger, my guy, uh, fellow uh, Chiefs fan as well. Huge DJ hey. out here in Salt Lake City. Yeah. I was just saying, what's up? Oh, okay. <laughs> That's all. Bangerang, <laughs> what's good? Bang. My guy, Ben, he's a huge DJ out here. Um, resident DJ at Sky and a lot of other places out here as well. Uh, has a huge presence. Also involved with U92 as well. Um, met this guy, probably had a lecture one time, I think, on 25th. And just followed him on Instagram, followed him on the socials. Been in contact with him ever since. And just, like, love his atmosphere. Uh, love the environment he brings with his music as well. And it's just cool seeing him DJ most of the time. And I did see him. Friday night to an echo. Uh, great set, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Appreciate good. that. Um, so really, uh, first, we do introduction, uh, introductions. Uh, first, I just want to get everyone intro, uh, introduced. Uh, I go by the name of DJ Teo, fellow DJ for the vision, uh, entrepreneur chef now as well. So make sure y'all <laughs> follow my food page. Um, <laughs> you know, just taking new hobbies. Um, so yeah, uh, just love DJ out here, Salt Lake City now. Uh, with and you see me with the vision anytime, anytime we have a performance, anything, I'm gonna be that DJ for them. Any artist in here? So yeah, um, uh, Frank the Third. You want to go next? Yeah, I'm Frank the Third, rapper and songwriter. I'm from the Bay Area, out here in Utah. Played uh, basketball at Weber State. That's where I met uh, JB, Teo, uh, Cal on the beat, all my guys in the vision. Cool, cool. JB, Roy, you want to go next? Go by JB Roy, Louisiana native, you know what I'm saying? Artist, song, singer, rapper, songwriter, musician. All that, I'm with it. Nice. <clears throat> young Ross, you wanna go next? Go by Young Ross, you feel me? From LA, South Central, West Adams to be exact. Producer and artist, you feel me? Making hits. <laughs> okay. Callum B, you wanna go next? What up, y'all? I'm Cal. Uh, producer, mixer, marketer, all that for the vision. Rockzo, you want to go next? Introduce him, uh, yeah. yeah, my guy Rockzo, uh, former artist out here for the Vision as well. Um, he has, uh, we met him not too long ago, actually, uh, one of the concerts, and we've been messing with him ever since too. New York native, uh, but yeah, my guy Rockzo, check him out as well. Um, yeah, I do want to get this started with the first topic. Uh, and I just want to take this opportunity to say, you know, this is stream. This is going to be stream. Um, Breonna Taylor's uh, killers have still not been arrested yet. The cops are still roaming around freely. Um, and I just want to take this opportunity to just uh, bring awareness and just bring awareness to that as well. Uh, it, it's just an unfortunate situation that's still lingering. And I think that should definitely uh, be solved by now. Um, but obviously, something else did happen recently uh, with Jacob Blake in, I believe, Wisconsin. Um, and it's just another example of why uh, Kaepernick took a knee, in my opinion. And, like, the fact that there, this is still going on is just frustrating. And um, I just I, – I want, I want to see change, and I want to see change in, like, the most expedited way possible. And I just wanted to get everyone's, you know uh, – uh, say on the what just happened to Jacob Blake and you know many others if you want to bring those up as well. So anyone got any takes on the Jacob Blake incident? Man, honestly, just looking at that situation, it just it just showed me more and more how how America is just so prone to hating colored people. Man, you know what I'm saying? Like even watching videos of of them letting people walk past them with assault. These police is letting people walk past them with assault rifles, you know what I'm saying? They taking killers, they taking mass murderers to Burger King before they even take them to prison. But for a black man, you know what I'm saying? We always gotta catch bullets or we always gotta get killed. You know what sure. I'm saying? And majority of the time, you know what I'm saying? It don't even be a motherfucker who have a, a weapon or anything, you know what I'm saying? He don't even be a threat, but we getting killed. 
And then every time somebody get killed, they want to put this narrative out, oh, he was high on marijuana when he got killed. Oh, he was high on fentanyl when he got killed. But it's like, bro, that's, a, that's enough reason to kill somebody, you know what I'm saying? Because somebody on drugs, if that's the case, you know what I'm saying? I feel like it's, it's just too many excuses, bro. They trying to find every kind of excuse to kill a fucking black man. Trayvon Martin was on marijuana. Now George Floyd was on fentanyl. Then the guy that got killed in Atlanta, he was drunk. Like, come on, bro. It's a whole lot of people that's out here like that. I feel like police jobs are to serve and protect, uh, period. It shouldn't be no other job but to serve and protect your community. Right. Yeah. I think you're right, bro. <laughs> yeah. For real. I think, I just, I think it's crazy, bro, the fact like, for one, you already know what's going on. Like, I don't think it's right that they shot him in the back, especially seven times, bro. I feel like as a cop, you're a trained professional. If you're going to shoot somebody, bro, like, leg check him. Like, just put him down or something like that. Like, you shoot this man in his back. Like, if you hit his spine, it's over. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. they just shooting the kill. Like, I don't know how much of a threat he actually was. But, I mean, as far as, like, Jacob Blake, I'm not trying to give the, the police an excuse or anything, but... I'm just thinking, like, if I'm if I'm in his shoes, shit, I already know what's going on. Like, nigga, they shooting. They shooting. They shooting first. Like, so I'm not even going to try to go to the car, bro. You feel me? Even if my kid's in there, like, I'm going to talk to the cops and be like, man, my kid's in the car, yada, yada, yada. You feel right. me? Like, because, bro, they, they shooting, bro. They they shooting the kill. So, but, um, but I seen, no, I seen another video, though. You know what I'm saying? They told this dude to put his hands behind his head. He was complying, bro. Complying. You talking about yeah. Him? Yeah, they yeah, like kicked him in the back. Attack the man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like we we fucked if we do and we fucked if we don't. That's how I see it yeah. nowadays. Cause see, if we comply with them, they still gonna fuck us up. If we don't yeah. comply, they might fuck us around kill us. Yeah. No, I feel you, but that, that dude, did they shoot that dude though? Bro, they whooped his ass. It was damn near the same shit. I'll take my <laughs> ass whooping over getting shot, bro. You feel me? Like mm. I oh, take me the one. Treat me like the white folks. This motherfucker walking around, walking <laughs> down the street with a fucking assault rifle, you know what I'm saying? And the police yeah. drove past him. He ain't drove past this man. This man went back home. He wasn't even from Kenosha. This nigga was from uh, Antioch, Illinois. And he went wow. back home and slept in his bed. Police didn't even know what the fuck this man was. And he killed two people on the street. So come on, man. That's just Tucker fucked Carson up. called him a hero, bro. Yeah. Oh, Tucker Carson. Call that dude that? a hero. He he, one of the anchors on Fox News. Call him a right. hero on national TV. On national How, TV, like yeah. what makes him what makes him a hero, bro? Because it wasn't nothing. Nobody needs to be saved. Like so, right. makes him a hero. You know what I'm saying? Like, exactly. Yeah. He bro, shot somebody. Niggas the get police. shot in the hood. Niggas get shot in the hood every day. Does that make a regular nigga in the hood a hero, bro? You know what I'm saying? Like nah. right. Man, that shit the police a hero. He's a hero to the people who have that agenda. Yeah, facts. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That's the police is. chief, the police chief went on national TV and said, "Oh, these people was outside past curfew. If they wouldn't have been outside past curfew, they wouldn't have got killed." I'm like, bro, that's like saying, "Oh, if that woman wouldn't have wore that skirt, she wouldn't have got raped." She wouldn't have got right. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So you you, you, talk, you talking about the same? This is the same dude we talking yeah. about, right? So, yeah. So, yes. but he's the outside past curfew with a gun. So exactly. You know, like that shit don't make no sense, bro. Makes no sense. Yeah. Um, no Y'all see, he got an attorney, and they're they're pleading self defense. What? <laughs> Yo, he gonna, hey, I, don't worry. I read he that gonna, shit. Crazy. He gonna beat listen, it, bro. Listen, yeah. and that that that's what scares me. Is like I feel like if he does beat this, how many people how are like that out exactly. there? Exactly, man. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Like yeah. people don't realize he just this is a big case. <laughs> like, and that wasn't his gun, I heard. That wasn't his gun, bro. Yeah, I, I don't know that either. They're going to put money behind him. They're going to put oh, yeah. money, bro. It's, all, it's already That nigga started GoFundMe go right now. That nigga had 300000 in there by this week. And it's already more. One. He'll have more than that. He'll have more than that, bro. That shit crazy. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. So, yeah. Um... It is a frustrating time right now, and for me, it's just crazy how everybody just how like a certain amount of people have a combating, uh, just a combating argument to these killings and to the BLM movement, and it's just it's crazy mm -hmm. how like a whole group of people are just collectively against the BLM movement, and 
uh, for police killings. And um, that's it for that topic. I do want to touch on the next one. Uh, and it's, it, what, what is your why? This was inspired by D Black. Um, he, he was talking about it and uh, on his story the other day on Instagram. And for those of you that don't know D Black, he is one of the artists for the vision as well uh, from LA. And he played football at BYU as well. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to get everyone's take on what is your why and what wakes you up in the morning. Um, so yeah, what is your why? Like as far as like just, just like in the, as a career wise as music and shit. Yeah, what wakes you up in the morning to um, try to accomplish whatever goal you have, any mini goal? Um, yeah. Shit, yeah, music the fan, wise, man. Yeah. I, I I say mine is the fan, man. You know, until until they right now, I gotta keep running. You yeah. feel me? Till till the mom's right, till she moved out the city, till my fam moved out the city, till my cousins moved out the city. Uh, you know, I gotta keep going. You yeah. feel me? That's true. Man, that's yeah, that's yeah. my why. And then my other why, I love this shit. Like I like music. This shit fun, bro. I don't like that shit fun, bro. I love I love going <laughs> to perform. I love recording shit. Love making new shit. Can't wait to put it out so they can hear this shit. So. Yeah, right, that's pretty much my why, man. I hear that. That's a good one too. I, I I say I say the same thing. My why is, is my family, my daughter. You know what I'm saying? My whole entire family, not just my in in immediate family, like my sisters and brothers. I'm talking about my my cousins, my aunties, my uncles. You know what I'm saying? Even you know extended family. Shit. Another thing is the team. You know what I'm saying? This team we got right now. That's my why. You know what I'm saying? Division team. Everybody in this team. Is my why, cause shit, I want to see all of us win, and me want to see all of us win is motivation for me. The music is motivation, you know what I'm saying. Then when I look back where I'm from and look at my community, that's my motivation too, cause you know what I'm saying. A lot of motherfuckers told me that I wouldn't make it, you know what I'm saying, that I should yeah. quit, you know what I'm saying, and that's just motivation for me. And then all the people, all my partners just locked up. Free my dog, Big Red, you know what I'm saying? He locked down right now. He got 11 more years to go. But that's my motive. That's my why, too. Because I got some good people that's on my side, you know what I'm saying, that ain't, ain't that haven't got the opportunities that I got. So that's my why. Gotcha. Yeah. I would say my why would probably be just having the opportunity to do stuff. Like, not everybody has an opportunity to make a difference or have an opportunity to do what we get to do. And yeah. for me, it's like, I, that, that's definitely like when COVID hit, I saw a bunch of DJs that I knew in like other cities and shit that's been doing this for like 20, 25 years, you know, at a high level, I saw them lose like a lot of shit, you know, and it's like, damn. And now they got kids and shit. They don't have the same opportunities that I got. You know, I'm still in my 20s, no kids building. So it's like, I feel like I got to, I kind of got to do it for them and my family and shit too. I hear that. So, sure. Yeah, uh, yeah, what's your why? Man, I feel like uh, it's pretty much, well, I got some similarities with everybody as far as, you know, for my family, you know, uh, I want my mom and dad to stop having to work. You know what I'm saying? They take, they support a lot of people back home. So I want to be able to kind of, you know, take on that why. I mean, take on that. And uh, my, my kids, you know, my wife, I want to be able to, everybody to relax, you know, be able to go on vacay, be able to chill. You know what I'm saying? I want to, I want to have some money doing something fun bro like yeah. you know when you, when you're doing something you you love and you're good at it you know that's where the money come in when you're having fun like when you're working every day just because and you don't enjoy that shit you don't put your all into it so i i love this shit i want to be known for it that's really my why i want to be known i feel like i'm good enough to be known um and i want to help take care of my team too the vision i want to help everybody get on yeah yeah with that yeah. Yeah, what about you count the beat what's your why <laughs> My, my number one is uh, I got to leave a legacy, kind of like what, what Frank just said. I got to leave a legacy. I mean, music is powerful. Like, I mean, times like this, people get through times like this with music, you know, mainly, you know what I mean? Yeah. Music, uh, music will change your whole paradigm. And so yeah. I just want to be remembered, you know, for just, just having some kind of impact. You know, I don't want to leave this earth without somebody you know, remembering me and like, hey, Cal, help me out with this. You know, I, I gotta, I gotta leave a, leave a, leave a legacy for sure. 
<laughs> hey, facts, bro. I, I kind of, like, want to build off that. Like, I thought about, you know, uh, Chadwick uh, Bozeman dying the other day, right? And I just mm. thought about, like, the legacy he left behind. Like, um, like the Black Panther, like, I, if you think about it, besides, like, Blade, you know, he brought Blade up. But uh, he's the first real big black superhero that we've had. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, um, he's a Howard graduate. So just seeing somebody in that position, it helps little, little black boys, little black girls, little kids in general. Um, mm -hmm. And just, you know, people people of our, our, our skin color, you know, to be able to see we can be successful. This is, he did a lot in a short amount of time. So he yep. definitely left a legacy, and that's what I want to do, too. Definitely. I, I agree with that too, you know what I'm saying? Just like, you know what I'm saying? I don't want I don't want people to uh look at us like we perfect because niggas ain't perfect at all. We ratchet, you know what I'm saying? We ghetto as motherfuckers. <laughs> I feel like, you know what I'm saying, we just showing people that you can be yourself and still be productive in this life. You ain't gotta be, you ain't gotta stay in the hood your whole life, bro. You can venture out, bro. You know what I'm saying? And go achieve things, man. But we not we not no whitewash motherfuckers, but we and, and you know what I'm saying. We definitely, I feel like we definitely could be good influences to this world, especially our youth. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. Hey, hey Rockzo, yeah, what, I wanted to get your why. What is your why, Rockzo? Yeah, my why is pretty much the same as everybody's, you feel me? The family, I mean, everybody locked up. That, you know what I mean? I fuck with real heavy. And another thing is um, I want to make a change. You know what I'm saying? Like, there, there's a lot of people who, you know, who, who get access to be able to make a good amount of money and then they can make change. You know what I'm saying? Like, look at things like Meek Mill's doing with the prison reform and all that other type of stuff. You feel me? Like, we need mm -hmm. shit like that. Because yeah. a lot of time people get the money and they turn their back on the community and, and we need them to make those changes because a lot of that, that type of shit that they doing could avoid shit like all this Jake Blake stuff going on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, right. facts. So, yeah, I want to make, I, I want to make a change. Besides everything else, I want to make a change when I get that back. Facts. Yeah. I like that one a lot. And one yeah, thing definitely. to add to uh, Rock Zoe is, is that's that's what the game is, man. Once you make it, you got to go back to your 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 section, your city, and yeah. help them out. You feel me? Facts. Yeah. You feel me? Facts. That's 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 one. That's that's for sure. That's, that's awesome for me too. Like mm -hmm. everyone in here. So yeah, um, I I appreciate all y'all um, explaining your whys. And all that. I mean, I loved every single one. And, you know, like, just inspiration and everything, it goes a long way, especially, you know, when times get tough. Um, but, yeah, I do want to touch on the next subject now. Um, has anyone picked up any new hobbies since quarantine? Uh, for me, uh, I think I definitely picked up uh, hiking. Uh, I think I like being more outdoorsy now. Just, you know, we're in, we're in an uh, outdoorsy state. So I definitely started doing, you know, more outdoorsy things out here. And another thing is cooking, taking it more serious. Not really want to make money off of it, just keeping it a hobby. And um, yeah, that's definitely what I picked up since quarantine happened. Um, so yeah, has anyone else picked up any separate hobbies other than music, or sports, or anything like that? Yeah, I say definitely that, cooking. Bro. I've been on my cooking shit heavy, and um, that outdoorsy shit. I used to just go to the park and shit, just look at ducks, bro. I never imagined myself <laughs> doing that shit. Before. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Man, it was so boring, bro. It was nothing to do. I'm like, I'm over here going to Sugar House Park, like, oh shit, look at the ducks, like, they crazy. Like, I'm like, what do I do? I feel you on that too. My wife been had me go out, bro. You know, I I never trying to go out. I'm trying to stay in, and I'm on the computer 24 seven. Really, Man, she got me going out. So. That's good. I ain't gonna lie, this 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 uh quarantine time that had me then uh made me spend a little more time like actually bonding more with my baby. You know what I'm saying? Like you know what I'm saying, like <laughs> we like best friends now. She you know what I'm saying, we talk with each other, you know what I'm saying, we go to the park, we do stuff, we laugh with each other, like you know what I'm saying, that's this time to help help me get closer with my baby, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's good, bro. <laughs> Cool. Oh, no. How about you, Bay? Have you? Picked, I know you're like really busy, especially in the DJ life still. So, have you picked up anything since the quarantine, uh, COVID period happened? I mean, music production, but like that's it. I didn't go outside. Like, yeah, I stayed inside and didn't do shit. And <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I like, like I learned able to. That's what I. That's what I picked up. So, yeah. I hear that. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. On to the next topic now. So, um, you know, uh, as many of you know, we're all big football fans in here, and you know, most of us have played football. And uh, obviously, we're trying to make the NFL happen right now, along with the more uh, larger Power Five schools. How does everyone feel about like you know football? Uh, trying to make a comeback or trying to start. How does everyone feel about that right now? I'm good for it. I'm good for it. I think, I mean, I feel like the NBA did it successfully. Now, granted, they were all in a bubble, and you can't really control college kids, but I feel like if people want to – like, these are people's livelihoods now. You know what I'm saying? That's how they feed their fans. Well, yeah, well, that, well, that. but, like, think think about it. If you a college senior – and they trying to cancel your – like, you're supposed to be a, you know, a first-round draft pick. Right. And then all of a sudden, right. like, nah, bro, like, we got to play. <laughs> we got to play. <laughs> hey, so are they giving dudes Are they going to have fans? I don't um, think you know, so. So fans won't be a thing. Um, and giving people oh, a year back, I don't know, that's an NCAA thing they're going to have to consider. Um, yeah, I have because, to. Yeah, what makes, yeah. It, what makes it tricky is a school part, you know, and – uh, they graduate. I don't know how it's gonna work, but um, but yeah, like for me, I kind of see it as unfair. Like I, I'm for it, but I feel like you know everyone should definitely be back because now you're looking at the SEC schools like like their like their draft their draft stocks gonna obviously go up because yeah. of these um, for say like uh, not non power five schools are gonna be playing as well, so. I feel like there should definitely be more direction and uh, more fairness in um, the direction they're going with with this because that is very unfair. Like, I can't imagine, you know, being at Weaver playing my senior year and someone else from, like, from what, um, LSU, Alabama get a chance and they probably weren't even supposed to have a chance in the first place. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I, I, I don't agree I with that do. aspect of all of it. Yeah. I just feel like, I feel like like Bangarang, he's saying that I feel like like life keep going on, bro. Like this shit hit, but everybody's still life getting is. older. You know what I'm saying? See, just like with our shows, bro. Like I could just be like, man, I if a show come, I'm I don't want to do it because it's nah, bro. Because bro, life is not waiting for nobody, bro. This the time is ticking, bro. Yeah. Either you gonna mm-hmm. either you gonna keep if you gonna try and find a way to live through this shit, or you just gonna be held back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yo, I feel like coronavirus is serious enough for them to be even doing all the shit that they're doing as far as the no fans and no concerts and all that shit. Yeah. Uh, I feel like man. they should be going to that extreme. My my take on it is I feel like they adding extras on it because the media can control whatever they want. They could they can control whatever they want you to see. Bingo. Yeah. <laughs> you feel me? I feel like they adding a lot of extras on it just so so you so you know they can control you. You feel me? Yeah. yeah, I feel like they had two, two much that. extra. Cause they they classify. They that class- too. You said what? Go ahead. I no, said I they classify. My problem with that too. Oh, oh go ahead. <laughs> no, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was just gonna say my problem with that too is that I feel like a lot of people who was able to like who came from nothing and was able to become something is is gonna be harder for that. You know what I mean? Everybody who came out the hood and had the dream of being either a basketball star, NFL star, or doing music or anything, like, I feel like those chances are so so slim now, you feel me? Because nobody's really making money that way anymore. You know what I mean? Like, you have to the point to where, people, like, I don't know if y'all seen the little Uzi, he just did a $15 virtual concert. Yeah, did y'all oh, wow. see that? I yeah. didn't see that. Yeah. So, that's right now, too. Like with, huh? He, I TikTok. bet you people were paying for that shit, too. I uh, don't know, but I, I I seen a lot of bad reviews on it. You know what I mean? Just, oh, there's no energy from the crowd. You know what I'm saying? So he's just like, mm. it's just him on a big ass stage, and that's it. You know what mm. I mean? There's no, he don't even look that hype. He just look like I'm gonna do a little bop, uh, 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 charge everybody fifteen dollars. Like, mm. wow, that's crazy. the people that make the bag from this, they they're gonna be the ones that really figure it out a way to. A, a way to make a solution to all these problems, man. You know, yeah. I mean? mm-hmm. can't just be like, yo, since COVID, bro, we just not gonna do nothing. Yeah, you know exactly. I mean? you gotta, ain't be like you gotta figure out a way to make it happen. Mm-hmm. Just like you gotta saying. figure it out. So my whole thing, with, like with all these big ass venues, why can't they just enforce the six feet? 
social distancing within their venues. Like, is that not a thing? Because they know they know people gonna be dancing on each other and shit. People yeah, start niggas, drinking, bro. Yeah, yeah, once you start drinking, like you <laughs> gonna be like, yeah, you gonna, yeah, you already Trust know. me. I see that. I see, I see that shit last week. <laughs> I seen that shit last night. Yeah. Man, yeah. I, I definitely hear everything y'all saying. Like, Oh, he was not about uh, to say six feet. Hey, Hell no. We had, we had definitely you see your little bad one. <laughs> you gonna but, get um, on? Yeah, just wanna wanna touch on the next subject now. Um, uh, I just wanna talk about why isn't Juneteenth considered a national holiday? Um, my opinion, it obviously, definitely should be, and it definitely should be top more in the education system. Um, I di- actually didn't know about Juneteenth until I went on my visit to a school and it was like during Juneteenth and I, uh, the black fraternities threw a party that day. Um, this is like my junior year going, like going into my junior year. And that's the first day I ever figured about Juneteenth. Uh, for me, it's one of my favorite holidays now just to like bring the community together and everything. Um, and just to see, you know, a lot of walks of life uh, celebrate that day, which is pretty special in my opinion. Um, but yeah, why do you guys think Juneteenth isn't considered a national holiday. Man, I feel like it's just like every other thing that's that's black. It's just like yeah, how yeah. you say you didn't know about Juneteenth. I didn't even know there was a black Wall Street. I didn't know that until I got in up in age, like 22, 23. I never knew that growing up that it was a black Wall Street. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I never knew there was a massacre on the Black Wall Street. That's why nobody yeah, knows Tulsa about didn't know that, bro. It, bro. People that so, lived there and grew up there did not know nothing about Did that. not know that. That's crazy. That is crazy. <laughs> so that's why I feel like, I feel like they do their best to hide a lot of shit from us. So you know why would they want to bring up Juneteenth? That's yeah. how I feel. They already, they barely want to give us a month. They give us February. And you know, it only got 28 <laughs> days in that motherfucker. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like, I feel like man, everything that show us in a positive light is gonna is gonna be hidden. It's gonna be hid. They don't like yeah. be hit. in a just, light. Hey, hey, just like history, bro. The deeper they dig in history, the blacker it gets. So they like, damn, we can't keep digging, <laughs> bro. <laughs> they like, right the black bro, we, they like, we all come from Africa, bro. <laughs> Point blank, yeah. period. We all come from Africa, dog. They they just don't they don't want that you know they don't want to do that I didn't know that till I was up in age you know what I'm saying they ain't teach that in school neither Mm-mm. yeah so it's like okay. I feel like anything that's like like Rockzo say anything that's positive in in a positive light for black people they, they not, not gonna sure. do that they not gonna show like, that think about where think about with movies real quick you feel me like they always put a white person in like a a position of authority like a cop or a judge or lawyer you feel me and then a black person will always be like the criminal or something like that you know what i mean yeah. like they they created the way that we view each other stereotypically through the media exactly. right yeah. that's, that's, that's the black right. person too so I, i'm with you on that that's true you feel me that it was just like the renaissance period renaissance mean re- rebirth they painted all them pictures light shakespeare black they painted them white got everybody thinking he white i bet yeah. y'all didn't even know that <laughs> Beethoven, I heard Beethoven. Beethoven, black. black. He black. Be- Beethoven, black, bro. They painted them white. It's it's just a, it's just the the uh, it's the system, bro. It's the system, bro. That's gotcha. that's why they doing they they doing certain shit, bro. You feel me? It's true. Just think mm-hmm. about it. Oh, Shakespeare, black, and you a black man. You like damn. <laughs> I feel that's like me that's, right there. That can be I feel me. like. I feel like that's what makes it so bad too. Like uh, what Rock Zoe was saying, like in movies and shit, how they portray us. You got to think about like let's let's take like somewhere like Idaho, where it's not a lot of black people. You feel me? As soon as they hear something on TV like about some black man getting shot, the first thing they think about is the movies and shit they see. Bingo. You know what I'm they don't know yeah. no black people, so they like, oh yeah, so they probably you know did something stupid. Stupid. Just like just, in the movies. Just, just like in that's the movies. The media. We, we portray it a certain way, but it's crazy because like now, like out here living in Utah, you know, like I got a lot of white friends and shit and I know they look at like black people different just cause you know, they hang out with people like me and shit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's not, people just go off what they see, bro. People just I go agree. off what they see. So. That's the media and who who controls the media? The white man. So they, exactly. gonna, you know, they gonna put what they want you to see, so. 
Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely true. So yeah, I mean, I feel like I feel like it's um. As long as we all, because look, if like you said, um, knowing Beethoven was black, that motivated you. You feel me? But yeah, I didn't know that. I been that shit too before it even that's came. Good, I been that. But at the same time, I feel like it's a problem too that we look at shit like that. Because everybody's always gonna look at shit as their race. You feel me? If this person did better because he's black, I could. Why we can't look at it like? A man did this. I could, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, we yeah, divide yeah, ourselves too when we do shit like that. Yeah. Yeah. I see what you're saying. That's a good point, bro. Yeah. Like, even when somebody dies, I can't stand when they say a black man was killed. Like, just say a man was killed. Because um, now when you say a black man, you make it seem like only black people are supposed to care that this man was killed. Yeah. Like it's, it's race baiting, bro. It's yeah, like I said, exactly. immediate control. Like, they race baiting. Like, they're trying to intentionally divide people. Yeah, you know. for sure, bro. That's exactly what it is. Uh, but the, exactly this world wouldn't is, move without black people, though. It couldn't move. It couldn't move mm-hmm. without black people, bro. Without these, mm-hmm. without the black inventions, come on, bro. Couldn't move. <laughs> that couldn't move, true. bro. Shit couldn't move, but it's cool, though. <laughs> uh, yeah, I hear y'all. Like, um, yeah, for me, like Juneteenth wise, uh, like, I definitely think it should be considered a federal holiday. I mean, it should be in motion to do is to do so but but like for you know for a lot, a lot of other things i feel like you know our generation is going to be the reason for change and to bring, you know bring this to light because if it's not talked about then you know it won't nothing will happen so i right. just think i'm very confident in our generation uh making changes and to make sure that you know stuff like this uh comes to light um but yeah just to touch on the next topic now um how do y'all, so in, uh, in the UK, uh, about a month ago, I think, there was like a socially distanced concert. Um, and you know, kind of everywhere other than America, COVID's not really a, a huge problem anymore. Um, but they did have a huge festival, a huge grass area, and there were platforms put in, um, put in like in the stands or in the crowd. And there were 500 platforms and they limited to five people at every platform. And it got people thinking, like, is this actually the future of concerts and everything like that? So I just wanted to get everyone's take. We did kind of touch on it earlier, but everyone's take on, like, socially distanced concerts. And or do you think anything will change in the future because of it? Uh, yeah. Oh, bro, I, I honestly, bro, I don't see that being the future, bro. I feel like <laughs> it's a thing for right now because <clears throat> I feel like with that, too, you lose a lot of money. Like if I'm if I'm somebody who throws concerts and shit, I lose a lot of money. Yeah, for one, a lot for of one, labor. A lot of la- labor. It, they, exactly, you got to pay people for labor and shit. It fucks up the vibe. People don't want to go to concerts no more. I yeah. feel like all this shit is gonna fade. Everything's gonna get back to the norm, bro. It's just gonna take a second. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, I agree with Mook. I feel like <laughs> right now you gotta find accommodations to what's going on in the world. Yeah, and it's, mm-hmm. it, you just gotta, you know what I'm saying? You gotta go roll with the punches, but eventually it's gonna get back to how it fucking was. But right now, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm 50 on it. I feel like it could go back to what it was, but I feel like we will have to fight for it because right now it's looking like they don't want it to be the way it was at all. Yeah, yeah. It's, like it's, yeah. it's gonna take yeah, a minute. And then it's like... Go ahead. I was just saying, it might, I was saying, I was saying it might take a minute, bro, or it could just go like just one day, just. Just go right back, but I oh, don't know. It ain't gonna happen overnight, I don't think. No. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like, if we don't that. fight for it, it will never go back. I feel like it will yeah. never go back if we don't fight for it. Because I feel sure. like they want it like this. I, I feel like it's just gonna be like, it's gonna be like, um, it's going to be somebody or some big concert or some shit where they just gonna run shit the same old way. And after that goes down, I feel like everything is just going to follow suit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that's what I feel and like it's going to happen for real. They're going to be like, yeah. fuck this. We're going to have a regular ass concert. And then mm-hmm. everybody else going to follow after, bro. Yeah. yeah, because right now the wave is a little, well, at least in L.A., the wave, the Airbnbs, they going to get that shit in. <laughs> they they really? just throwing shit at the Airbnb. You shut down the club, you're going to find somewhere. We're going to do, do this shit somewhere else. Right. Yeah. So. I think niggas gonna adapt. Niggas gonna Jeez. adapt. That's yeah. True. I agree. I hear that. Yeah, I mean, like the money is a big part, like For real? You know, and all of it. But like, 
for me, when things do back go like go back to normal, like are these like same remedies and these same like uh, sanitizing, uh, like like sanitizing steps in order for people to feel safe and everything? Like, will they keep that? I feel like you know. Uh, Definitely. Yeah, I think yeah, that's probably would. I, th- I think they probably. I, would. I would love that. Like yeah, the movie yeah. sanitizing each seat. I think that should have been happening. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. But, uh, yeah. That's the. Uh, that should yeah. have been. Okay. Been <laughs> yeah. So that's what I feel about it. Like, like things progress and things uh, keep going. I, I hope it does. Uh, I hope people stay clean, especially like you know, it's always gonna be in the back of my mind. Like, okay, pandemic can hit at any time. So Mm-hmm. traumatizing feeling so i mean for me i'm definitely gonna always think about like a virus again just to be even more clean than i was before you know so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um yeah just um to touch on the next topic uh let me see the next one yeah, does anyone have any projects coming out any soon uh, anytime soon uh shit right now <laughs> Shit, right now, just singles, man. You feel me? Yeah. But I got some projects in in, in the line, in lineup for sure. They they already ready. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, me and Ross working on the cold one right now. Yeah, yeah. So it's like we still working, bro. We just we just need to put dates on them. We just, yeah, yeah, that's it. it. We just need to put dates on them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah what about so you, you got some coming out, huh? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I got I got Zone the Lake coming out. So right now I'm just trying to put out videos and and things like that just to promote the album because I don't want to just drop an album without nobody without talking about anything. Yeah, yeah. You know I, mean? I did that yeah, before. And that was yeah, that, and that's that's really my focus right now. Just to that's make it. sure we promote everything. We even the, you know, even the music that we got out right now. We trying to find ways to promote it better because you know it's still a lot of people haven't heard the music that heard we got out right now. In this, so in this, that's, in this hits. <laughs> yeah. So that's in no one thing. Stuff. We just trying to crazy thing. find yeah. different marketing strategies and promotion strategies to get this music heard. Because definitely once it get heard, I know it's gonna it's gonna be crazy. I know gonna crack for sure. For sure, yeah. for sure. It's too many too many players on the team. Mm-hmm. I feel like the next step with uh, all the music that's out for everybody, I feel like it's being able to open up for somebody. You know what I mean? Like, I know yeah, it ain't no We was working towards that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know yeah, it, ain't like no, it ain't like no big people coming out here right now, but I feel like once they do it, if everybody keep doing what they're doing right now, eventually they're going to be like, hey, you know, these the dudes that should open up for y'all. Yeah. Yeah, and once that happens... You know, it's gonna be twenty. It's gonna be uh, three hundred people there to come see Ride Wave, and they're gonna hear you, and they're gonna be like, "Oh damn! Oh, and they got all this shit." You know what I'm saying? So that's yeah. Good, bro. Yeah. Enough for nothing. Every week, just reach enough for nothing. For every week, put something, put some bread together, and just put it in sun, so that way, when shit do settle down, we could just book a big artist. So. For yeah, real, hey, that's bro. yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Use that bread that we already have saved up from that last, you know what I mean, situation and just keep adding towards that, you feel me? Yeah, like yeah. Five, five to ten, you feel me? Bring somebody out here and, and really do something with it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, who who else we need as a lineup? What we need is the artist and we the lineup. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> we, we all fire, really? you feel me? That's it. Really all right we need now. is a name. <laughs> we got anybody a lot with out. a name would be great right now. Yeah, you don't even have to be nobody crazy. For real. Yeah. And then you got to, you got to think about it too, bro. Like once everything open up, like think about how much show money these rappers done missed out on, bro. So whoever was charging ten, it's gonna go down to like seven. You know what I'm saying? Whoever was charging like five, it might end up being like three. You know what I'm saying? So Man. everybody gonna try to make it from that bag. Man, I'm yeah. mad that I'm. Mm-hmm. You said what? Let's take advantage of that. Yeah. Man, I'm just, I'm well. just thinking, I'm just thinking about on all the, the time we done missed out, like, which is the key times, like, we missed out on the spring damn near and the whole summer, bro. Yeah. And that, like, that's really crazy, because that's, like, time we can't get back. Yeah. It's not. Mm-hmm. But, like, I mean, like, we were, hey, we were preparing very good, like. Man, we I were mean, having some momentum. Yeah, we were, uh, we were preparing hella good, like, we were supposed to open up for SOB. You know? SOB. And, so hey, we was gonna try to get that all black shit. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, shout out to my boy Saint Marquis, another DJ, DJ for the boy as well. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> opening up is opening up is my thing. Like I like concerts. I like everything like that. So, I like that. You know, once it all goes back to normal, I mean, you know, I feel like we're prepared enough, and you know, we were already on the right direction to want yeah. like, to do what we want to accomplish. Uh, but yeah, Bang, do you have any like any new projects or like any anything coming out on your end at all? Um, I mean, I got shit I'm working on. But like okay. I don't know when I'm gonna put it out. <laughs> it's really That's how it goes. That's how it goes. Like, like yeah. it, it's been cool. Like like I said, just been fucking around in Ableton. I've been making some beats, um, and just remixes that I've, I'm gonna be putting out. Hopefully yeah, this week. Actually. Cool. I'm gonna yeah. get at you about those remixes. Yeah, That's, that's pretty cool for sure. Um, Thanks, bro. But yeah. Yo, any of y'all know how to use beat uh, beat on my phone? No, go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna ask you quick though. Any of y'all know how to use like a beat machine, like like the machines? The NPC? Like, NPC? Yeah, yeah, I got an NPC yeah. at the crib. I, I don't use that shit, but yeah, I need to. I don't use it either though, but I, I got one. Like, I, <laughs> it looked cool. You know. It looked cool. Yeah, it, looks, it, do. it may be yeah. more convenient too, but I just ain't used it. True. Um, but yeah, I just want to um, get on our last subject now of the day. Um, you know, for the most part, we've all been out here for a while now in Utah. Uh, for me, it started in Ogden at Weber State. And, you know, I love Weber State. I love all the connections I made up in Ogden. Um, but for the most part, it got to a point where I was in Salt Lake like five days a week. Um, so I wanted to move down to Salt Lake because that's uh, primarily where I'm DJing at. Um, and like... I just wanted to see where everyone's head's at. Like, is everyone going to stay in Utah at this point? Because for me, I definitely want to own property out here. Um, and sure. I want to venture out to, like, you know, other cities. Um, I have my head wrapped around Vegas and Phoenix. Um, California is, like, eh, because of the price of living. Yeah. Um, back home is pretty hard to do. Um, but I just want to see everyone's take on, like, uh, like you're going to stay here or not and, like, how long you want to stay here for um, with me personally, I'm gonna stay here till it's time for me to uh, till it's the right time, real shit. So I don't know when that time is, but honestly, I I, I want to have property out here and probably property in Vegas and probably in LA if if it's you know if it can happen. But I don't, I don't honestly know when I'm a, when I'm gonna leave though. So. Yeah, yeah, I agree too, bro. Like, I want to be in a position with all this music shit where I can have a spot in Cali, a, keep my spot here, and then shit, just be able to move around. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Really, for real. Yeah. I feel the same way. I know for sure I'm gonna get me a spot in Louisiana. I'm, I'm gonna buy some land in Louisiana. I'm gonna buy me a spot out here, buy some land out here, and then I might fuck around and buy some land in Texas too. But I, I want to buy land for sure, for sure. Yeah. yeah, that's what that's, that's so, the game bro. right there. Yeah, it's the new Silicon Valley, bro. For real, like yeah. 15 yeah. years from now, this place will be completely different. But right, it's, it's, it's booming here, yeah. for sure. Especially uh, Lehigh area. Yeah. Lehigh area. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, the, the quicker you get property, the the better, because the the value's just gonna keep going up. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You right. Exactly. I definitely want to get property out here. I, Utah will always be a place, you know what I mean? I'll come back to it or whatever. So when I was chill, whatever, I definitely want property out here. Because it's like, it's mad safe out here. You feel me? Not worry about nothing. Ooh. Exactly. Just move around, don't worry about nothing. You feel me? Like, who the fuck wouldn't want that? You know what I'm saying? Right. Exactly. For real, but... Uh, uh, I want to I wanna try and make it out here, too. You feel me? A lot of people be like, oh, you go somewhere else, push your music, blah, blah, blah. But I I, I would rather try and make it out here. You feel me? Because Man, right, it's I'm a rather, I'm talking about that. Trying to do what they think is impossible. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. I was talking about that yesterday, actually. Yeah, I love that. Because, like, you know, you got to get big where you're at first. Like, that's, yeah. that, that's just the name of the game. Like, I mean, for me, you know, I love Salt Lake City a lot. And I just want to keep progressing, keep, keep building myself you know, to a point where it's like, I'm financially good to make, like, you know, like a lot of decisions on my own. And mm. um, yeah, I'm pretty much going to ride the Salt Lake wave until like, you know, my next calling comes to like hit another city or, I mean, it, only time to tell, I'm, you know, I'm 22 and I could stay out here as well. Um, right. But yeah, it's just only time to tell at this point. Um, but I just want to, you know, turn the city up, keep building my resume, 
to a point where it's just undeniable. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, what about you, Bank? Are you like centered on here at this man. point? No, I'm a. I like Salt Lake. I think that just with some of the people I've talked to, like just recently, it wouldn't. Salt Lake is up next. You know, yeah, um, yeah. they just put twenty three million dollars or some crazy shit into that airport. You know what I'm saying? Oh, they still building. Yeah. They yeah. still building. Like they I, still I building. think, when it comes to entertainment and the arts, Salt Lake is up next. So I don't want to be anywhere yeah. else because we got a that bunch is. of cool shit happening here, and there's a bunch of talent out here too that people are discovering. And Post Malone living here is a big cosign too. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Hey, he's a Utah yeah. resident now. Yeah, we you trying to connect with that boy too. Straight up. Shit. So Me too, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Man. Yeah. And I feel like artists, a lot of artists blow up in cities they not even from. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. For real. Yeah. yeah. Master P did it, nigga. Fuck you mean. Yeah. You feel me? Shit, like, like, shit J. Cole too. Shit. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Dudes is blowing up in cities they not from. Then they city gonna fuck with them once they once they on. You feel me? Yeah. Shit, shit, Drake too. Shit, Dr Houston really put Drake on for real, bro. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, yeah. For the most part, like what Bang was saying too. Like, there's so much potential out here, and it's just always growing. Really, everyone I brought out here from other states and other cities, they just they were always surprised on how like. How much fun they have, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. <laughs> I got people that's trying to come back out here for sure. Yeah, yeah. Like, me too. Uh, me too. You know, that's always a good feeling when you know, like I could just bring someone out here, and just, have, <laughs> just like have a great time and whatever like fits their agenda, you know. And yeah, there's a lot of oh. potential, a lot of talent. So yeah, that's that's, that's fast, good. bro. Like you gotta think, like like. Bro, like, let's say this COVID shit wasn't happening, bro. My cousins and my brothers come out here, bro. We could go to the lake during the day. You feel me? Yeah. And at night, we could go to the club. Like, it's so much shit yeah. you can do out here, bro. It's yeah. hella shit you could do out here. Yeah. It's hella shit. I definitely hear that. Yeah, I definitely hear what everyone's saying. Um, yeah, um, that is the end. Uh, the, we do want to wrap it out now. I do want to thank all of y'all. Yeah, like... Your good insights. Does anyone have anything they want to touch on before we fully wrap it up? Nah, good. Man. Okay. Thanks where, for having where can me. we find you, Bang? Um, Instagram, Bangerang the DJ, Twitter, Bangerang the DJ. Um, thanks for having me. For sure. Appreciate you coming. Thanks for coming, no bro. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate you, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No worries. Um, for real, send me shit if y'all want. Like, send me shit. I'll check it out. You know what I'm saying? I'm yeah, always got, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, like, for sure. like tail nose. <laughs> <laughs> you know, bang. It's all love. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, love. Um, oh, for real, I look forward to working with y'all too. Like, let's build some shit. Like, yes, for real, sir. for real. Like, we Travis. like we're really at the bottom right now. Like, the the yeah. playing field is level. Yeah. yeah. So, hey, that's the best thing I heard all that's day. A, yeah, for true. real, that's the truth. True. Yeah. So, true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm glad we could turn this shit up, man. I really feel like we could. It got mad, like you said, it got mad potential out here. Yeah. Why jump on something that's already going when you can start something and then just watch it blow up? You feel me? Exactly. The, the, the profits yeah. would be way better. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. Once again, I just wanted to thank everyone for their insights and everything. This was a great podcast, and I appreciate uh, Cal, JB, Mook. Ross, uh, Rock Zo, and Bang, obviously. Um, I appreciate you uh, coming in and taking the time um, to have this podcast with us. Um, yeah, so that is a wrap for the Vision Podcast number four. Make sure uh, you follow the Vision team on uh, Instagram. It is at a construction hour right now, but uh, we're going to get it going really, really soon. Yes, uh, sir. But yeah, mm -hmm. so thank you, everyone. <clears throat> hey, have a good one. Uh, All right, so, peace. Peace. Uh, All right, yeah.